That advice and example is a fitting model for the leadership we know the class of 2024 will offer, will offer our country. I'm pleased to introduce a leader who has followed her mother's guidance and set that example. As vice president, she has traveled all around the world to strengthen our alliances and partnerships. She's met with more than 150 world leaders. She has stood up for international rules and norms and our democratic values. From the Situation Room to military bases around the world, she has been a strong advocate for a strong U.S. military and strong global leadership, all in support of American security and American prosperity. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the first woman to be elected Vice President of the United States, Kamala Harris. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. And congratulations to the cadets of Air Force Academy Class of 2024. <laughs> to Secretary Frank Kendall, General Chance Saltzman, General David Alvin, Lieutenant General Richard Clark, and to all the friends and loved ones and sponsor families of these extraordinary graduates, thank you all for what you have done to support them in this journey. And again, I applaud all that you have done every day. In 2020, as a United States Senator, it was my privilege to nominate five cadets to this class. Lynn Lee Davis, Elizabeth Deards, Kyle Motes, Noel Marani, and Jerixa Vega. And as Vice President, I know firsthand the excellence produced by this academy. With me here today is Lieutenant Colonel Deborah Starkey, class of 2009, the first Space Force Guardian to serve as military aide to the Vice President. Lieutenant Colonel Zachary Fulton, class of 2007, and Major Anthony Navaroli, class of 2013, who flew me here on Air Force Two. And since taking office, I have flown nearly 400,000 miles across continents with the help of graduates of this very academy. So it is my firsthand experience that this academy produces some of the greatest pilots in the world. Indeed. Cadets. Today, you join generations of Americans who have graduated from this extraordinary institution. And let us reflect then on what that has required of you. You survived beast and recognition, triple threats, and core astro. And many of you even made it through Cy John Hall. <laughs> many. <laughs> Together, you also celebrated victories at Acceptance Day and Commitment, and at Ring Dance and Job Drops. And I am told, on occasion, you did some celebrating off campus as well. At Parkway. And at Dub House. Mostly, apparently, on Thursdays. <laughs> and I am informed that if you came back a little late and missed DI, or if you were one of the cadets who decided to, quote, borrow the superintendent's license plate, that today you could still have some tours to march off. Well, and I think your parents and family would be happy to know, you should know that I believe in the power of redemption. So to all whom this applies, listen carefully. I hereby waive any confinements and restrictions for minor violations of the cadet disciplinary system. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Class of 2024. Four years ago, you arrived here as strangers. And today, you graduate as one class and one family, united in selfless dedication to service and to our country. 
I believe there is no more noble work that one can do than to serve our nation in uniform. On behalf of our Commander in Chief, President Joe Biden, and our entire nation, it is my honor to congratulate you on taking your place in the long blue line. Today, today you join the United States Joint Force, our sword and shield. Today you join the ranks of the United States military, warriors who possess extraordinary skill, discipline, and dedication. Today you join the greatest fighting force the world has ever seen. Next month, we mark the 80th anniversary of D-Day, that shining moment of allied bravery and sacrifice made possible because of America's air power. In the months leading up to the landings, it was our pilots, our planes, and our air crews that knocked the enemy from the sky. It was America's forces in the air that bombed train tracks and fuel depots to prevent Nazi reinforcements from reaching the front lines and helped defeat tyranny and fascism in Europe. Eighty years ago, over the beaches of Normandy, America won control of the skies. And we have kept it ever since. From air-to-air -air combat over the Korean Peninsula, to providing close air support in Vietnam, from our dominance in Desert Storm and the Balkans, to Iraq and Afghanistan, America's record of air and space superiority has been unmatched and unbroken. And today, around the world, our allies are in awe and our adversaries in fear of America's dominance in the air. We see it on NATO's eastern flank, where our air patrols deter Putin from extending and expanding his war of aggression. We see it in Ukraine, where our weapon deliveries and missile warnings help the people of Ukraine defend their homes and homeland, their sovereignty and territorial integrity. We see it in the Indo-Pacific, where our presence ensures a free and open region. We see it in space, where America's military watchful eye protects and supports our forces. And we see it in the Middle East, where last month, when Iran launched an unprecedented attack on Israel, it was our air and space forces that mounted an unprecedented defense, along with our allies and partners. More than 300 drones, cruise missiles, and ballistic missiles were fired at Israel. And thanks to our airmen and guardians, 99% of those threats did not hit their target. Cadets, as it has been for generations, America's national security and global stability depend on our strength in the sky and space. And as officers, our nation is counting on you to preserve and extend that strength, including, I will add, through your ability to innovate. Since the days of Kitty Hawk, the United States has led the world in aerospace innovation. The first modern drone, the first GPS satellite, the first stealth 
aircraft. And you are uniquely positioned to carry on this legacy of innovation. Because after all, your generation grew up online. Technology that might be unfamiliar or even intimidating, maybe to some people on the stage, I don't know, um, but to previous generations, is intuitive and even exciting to you. Here at the Academy, it is you that built aircraft designed to neutralize drones. You who learned how to use AI to protect military technology in space. And as a point of personal pride, as chair of the National Space Council, I was particularly proud to learn that last November, you designed, built, and launched your own satellite, Falcon XX. Sat X. Falcon Sat X. And I am confident that as the nature of warfare changes, you will make sure that no one will ever match, must less exceed America's military power. As you innovate and shape our future, be guided then by the foundational beliefs that have defined our nation for centuries. Today is not only a graduation, it is a commissioning. In a few moments, you will take an oath, not to a person, not to a political party, but to the Constitution. An oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. An oath to uphold our nation's highest ideals of liberty, equality, and justice, and to preserve and protect our democracy. This tradition goes back to the founding of our nation. And even in a world of continuous change, this oath, well, it remains constant. And I am confident that both in and out of uniform, this oath and the ideals it represents will guide you in all that you do. Class of 2024, I will conclude with this. As four degrees, as has been mentioned, you chose an exemplar to inspire and guide you, Mayor, Major, excuse me, Leroy Homer Jr. A 1987 graduate of this academy and first officer of United Flight 93 on September 11, 2001. As has been said, Major Homer was a true American hero who gave his life to protect our country. And here today, as my honored guest, I've invited Major Homer's wife, Melody, and daughter, Laurel, to join us. And Melody and Laurel, thank you for all your family has done to serve our nation. So looking out at these cadets, we know Major Homer's vision and his spirit lives on. And graduates then, finally, I will say, wherever you go from here, you are ready. You all are ready. You have the skills. You have the knowledge and the strength of character to meet any challenge. You are warriors. You have dedicated yourselves to the service of our nation. And America's security relies on you. I know you will make our country proud. And as your Vice President, it is my profound honor to congratulate you on this tremendous accomplishment. 
and to soon address you as graduates of the United States Air Force Academy. God bless you and God bless the United States of America. Thank you. The class president for 2024, Cadet First Class, Adedapo Adeboyajo. The Summer Cadet Wing Commander, Cadet First Class, Haley Kim. The Fall Cadet Wing Commander, Cadet First Class, Isaac Bates. And the Spring Cadet Wing Commander, Cadet First Class, Abigail Worley, will present the class gifts to the Vice President of the United States. Vice President Harris, for your dedicated service to our nation, to the United States Air Force, to the United States Space Force, and to the United States Air Force Academy, it is with great pride that today's graduating class designates you, by acclamation, an honorary member of the United States Air Force Academy's Class of 2024. As tangible evidence of that honor, we ask that you accept this painting by Justin Hayward on behalf of the United States Air Force Academy. We also present you with our class coin as a token of our appreciation. Ma'am, 